Alright, just about getting started. Alright, hello everybody. Everything should be set up. This is uh, my second scenario for the League of Extraordinary Investigators. I'm playing Mark Harrigan, who after a mind-bending trip to the theatre, is now in his natural habitat, which is a swanky dinner party. Uh, the conclusion of Curtain Court, the first scenario, was uh, I was defeated by horror, so Mark is starting with one uh, mental trauma. Um, the man in the pallet mask has gone into my deck. I managed to get four experience points, so I've bought um, two copies of I've Had Worse. That's mostly to sort of try and shore up his um, uh, sanity damage. So he only has five sanity, so I'm actually starting at four, which is a pretty rough place to start. Um, but we'll see how we go. So um, everything's set up. I'm going to shuffle my deck and draw my opening hand. Hide that away. Okay, so this is mostly going to be about parlay actions as opposed to getting clues from locations. Um, I'm going to hold on till I've had worse because, uh, as I say, I'm starting with damage already. Normally, I would definitely take scene of the crime and I would keep flashlight as well. But because we're going to be parlaying instead, I'm actually going to pitch flashlight and I'll pitch scene of the crime. I'm going to keep. Uh, mm hmm. I'm going to keep take the initiative because we're going to have some tests to do. Do I keep the cash or not? I've nothing to spend it on at the moment, but there is one of the parlay, um, one of the parlays you need to have ten resources. So I'll hold on to that. We'll just draw two and hope to get something useful. Okay, shell shock goes away. Home front's not great. Um, we'll draw one more. Steadfast. Okay. Could be better. Could be worse. I expect. So we're going to be starting the foyer. I haven't put the bystanders out there yet. The foyer uh, has a resign action and also one clue. So bystanders go at random. So I'm just going to start from the top corner. All right. I haven't actually played this scenario all that much. So my knowledge of kind of who has which parlay tests uh, and what location shell values are isn't great, but um, that's fine we'll just see how we go okay so looking from top constant domain uh, we're testing a book uh, testing intellect which isn't great for mark uh, Shimaru is six cards in hand and then it's a test of two so if I can get fine clothes out that makes that a very easy test Jordan Perry is ten resources and then he is a uh, intellect Sebastian is three willpower test and Ashley is two actions. So actually, I quite like Ashley when I'm getting set up. Uh, if I'd managed to get fine clothes in my opening hand, that would have been fantastic. Maybe I should have mulliganed harder for fine clothes. Uh, agenda 1A, fashionable 8 is three doom. And the first act, uh, there's only a single act for this, which is um, just to investigate as much as possible. Shuffle the encounter deck and then figure out what we're going to do. So, my thinking is I'm going to make a beeline for the gallery uh, and then we can do Ashley things next turn. So, first action, I'm going to move to the courtyard. Five shroud. After you enter the courtyard, discard the top card of the encounter deck and it's an enemy. Draw it. It is not. Second action, we're going to move up to the gallery. After you end your turn at the gallery, test two willpower. If you fail, place one of your clues on the gallery. Okay, that's not great, so we've taken two actions. Third action, can't actually do anything. So low shroud though, so if I do end up having to drop clues, I can maybe grab a flashlight and get some back. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, I don't have two actions to parlay Ashley yet. So what I might do is just play my empty cash while I have the spare action. Enemy phase, nothing happens, so we gotta upkeep. Draw a card. Hey, that's interesting. Man in the pallet mask comes out straight away. And he goes at the location furthest from me, which is gonna be one, two, one, two, three. I think it, we'd pretty much choose any of these three. I am tempted to. Let's see, I might put him at the 
way. That way, if we manage to like have enough action spent to take him out on the way out of the house, maybe um, that would be fine. Uh, get my resource. Then we go to. In fact, hang on. One thing I've forgotten is my handy dandy turn tracker. So let's grab one of those. So this is the start of turn two. One doom. And then we'll draw a counter card. Uh, and it is a young psychopath. After the young psychopath engages you, you must either take one horror or it gets plus three fight until the end of the investigation phase. This is not super great because I still have no weapons. Uh, and I was hoping to spend some actions to parlay with Ashley. Uh, I'm a 5 on 2 if I take the horror. And I do have an I've had worse in hand. Uh, so I think we'll take the horror. Now, I was pointed out last time that I never used Mark's reaction ability, which is after damage is placed on a card, you control draw one card. I didn't use it once because I completely forgot. Uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. It's been seared into my memory. Um, but that doesn't trigger for horror, which is what I was just double checking. So Young Psychopath is uh, only a two. I'm five on two. So uh, I think we'll just go five on two, try to punch it for the first action. Okay, he's got no damage on him. It's a shame, but that's a success. Second action, I'm going to punch it again. Five on two. Uh, we need to draw a second token. He failed, plays one doom on a lunatic enemy in play. We didn't. So the lunatic is discarded. Uh, and I still can't parlay. Uh, let's see. Man in the Pallet Mask has come out already. Shell Shock, I wouldn't mind drawing now. And drawing the sign, I wouldn't mind. So these are the two extra weaknesses that I know that are in my deck. So actually, for my last action, I'm just going to draw a card. Another I've had worse. Could be worse. Okay. Enemy phase, there's no, uh, I don't have any clues, so that's why I'm not doing the test on uh, this location. Uh, I suppose that's a question. Do I need to do the test anyway in case of a bad stuff token? Probably I do. So actually what I'm going to do is I'll retcon it. I didn't have any clues to drop, but last turn I would have had to do a test and I'll do it again now. So I'm going to do that test twice. Um, I wouldn't have boosted the test anyway. So three on two for last round. Fine. Three on two this time. Fine. So I think we should be square there. Um, now we'll go to upkeep. So I'm going to take the initiative. We've got to 10 resources. Second doom with three an encounter card and it is corrosion discard item assets so this travel valley the location if no uh, from my hand I actually have no assets so that corrosion goes surge that's right isn't it that's crazy okay and it surges into another young psychopath uh, okay this sucks so I could take another horror, that's going to put me at three horror, which is, um, would be really rough place to be. Well, I, still, I do have two I've had worse. There's things I don't want to use I've had worse for a single horror. That's really shitty. I think we're going to take another horror. And now we're going to have to really start healing some up. So... Five on three, all I can uh, five on two. Sorry, all I can do is punch it. There's a uh, success. Punch it again. Success. Psychopath is dead. I really can't believe the start I've had here. This is rough. Um, and I'm gonna draw another card. Come on, where are my assets? And this was turn three. Okay, end of my turn, I need to test two. Uh, that's fine, I fail, but I don't have any clues to drop. Enemy phase, there are no enemies, so we go to upkeep. Still none, but at least I have 
vicious blow so if I draw another two health enemy I can kill it uh, I have just realized that my entire thing isn't showing because uh, I was showing my intro screen and never switched the scene given the fact that that's three whole turns that actually haven't been um, visible I think what I'm going to do is start that over again. Uh, hmm, is that the right thing to do? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I've not been—I uh, haven't been cheating it, but I think it's probably the. If no one can actually see what I'm doing, that's not great, is it? All right. Well, that was just three rounds of practice. I feel like a bit of an empty. Let's start that again. So, Man in the Pallet Mask is going to go back in. I really should have spotted that earlier. What an idiot. Okay. This will be nice and quick. Now we'll go back there, put that over, put that over. Mark goes back there. Roll the ass back in. Start at zero doom. Okay, so. Probably why I shouldn't be streaming so late, but uh, whatever. We're going now. If for any reason that was the wrong decision, uh, just to, to restart so people can actually see, fair enough. Uh, I figured it was better than having three hidden turns. I can assure you, I wasn't like I would have if I was cheating, I probably would have started with a uh, <laughs> better than two young psychopaths, but all right, let's go for it. So I'm gonna draw my opening hand again. Shell shock automatically goes. We'll replace that with a cult. At least I got weapons this time. Okay, I'm gonna keep because I've got a weapon. I'm actually tempted just to keep this hand completely as is. Normally I wouldn't keep two I've had worse, but because because of that horror I'm starting with, and because of the young psychopaths, I think we might just hold on to both. Now let's see where we actually have all our different parlays this time. So Ashley's up in the dining room this time. Uh, Jordan's over there in the living, living room. Excuse me. I still don't have fine clothes. Is that the other option? Do I mulligan for fine clothes? Is that better than flashlight and cash? Um. Yeah, let's do that. Let's throw cash flashlight. I'm gonna keep a weapon. I'm gonna keep iPad worse in case something horrible comes out. And we'll mulligan hard for flashlight. Uh, for flashlight, sorry. And we didn't get it. Fair enough. But we've got a weapon, so that's fine. Okay. Same tactic, probably. Make a beeline for uh, Ashley and try and get that one out of the way because it's action intensive. So, first action, we're going to move to the ballroom. After the form parlay, action to the ballroom, get two resources. Then I'm going to move again to the dining room. Action, heal one horror, then reveal a random token. If it is a skull or tentacle, take a horror and place a doom. So, I'm not going to do that. That was my second action. Third action, uh, I'm gonna pay three and play my cult. There are no enemies, so we go straight to upkeep. And the pallet masters come out first time again. Someone can work out what the mathematical chances of that are, it's very low. Uh, same logic, I'm gonna leave them in the lobby. My resource, we go to one doom, start at turn two. Make sure I shuffle all the encounter deck. And there we go. Tough crowd. The tough crowd is playing next to the agenda deck. Each investigator must find one additional action to parlay. Well, do I just spend my entire turn parlaying Ashley once? Uh, I realise I haven't actually got any of the clues on these guys. 
Let's do that now. So these get two clues on each. Uh, I parlay to remove the clues from them. And when I do that, I get to flip the bystanders over. Okay, so I think for my turn, we are just gonna spend all three actions to parlay Ashley. And gets us one clue. Uh, and that goes at the end of the round. Okay, there are no enemies, so we gotta upkeep. Worse, get a resource, get my actions back. Round ends, top ground goes in the discard. Up to two doom, start around three. Encounter card is fine dining. Just either place a clue on a bystander asset in play or take a horror and a damage. I've just spent an entire turn getting one clue. I really don't want to give it up now. So I'm going to take the damage and horror, but then I'm going to cancel them straight away because I've had worse. To gain two resources instead. I think that's a good move. Okay, now I'm going to spend my first two actions to parlay Ashley again. Gets me a second clue. Uh, and then I can mark that she has been uh, interviewed. I'll leave that up. You can pause the screen now if you want to read the story text on there. Great. Uh, to say that I've interviewed them, what I'm going to do is just keep a copy of the card up there uh, and I'll exhaust it so that I know that I've done it. Uh, I've got one more action, so let's see, who do I want to target next? Uh, six or more in hand, how many cards do I have? Only four. Uh, I wonder about going on Jordan Perry, because I'm almost at the ten. Uh, yeah, I'm almost at the ten resources now. I still really would quite like fine clothes. It was pretty much in the deck just for this scenario, it's so clutch. They're all going to be tests on intellect or willpower. Uh, six or more cards. She is a willpower. Two. So it would be three on two by default. Maybe I'm just going to start drawing up then, actually. Home front. There we go. I'm going to start drawing up the hope that I find fine clothes, then I can go and do her first. Uh, enemy phase, there are no enemies, so I've got to upkeep. No fine clothes. We do go to three doom. Uh, so that, this is where Diane, the host, comes out and she goes to the uh, bystander with the fewest clues and she basically hovers around them and then you can't uh, you can't get clues at her location. So the good thing for us is she's going to stick with Ashley because Ashley has no clues. She counsels the fewest. Um, she's just going to chill out there. Uh, and then we have to shuffle the discard pile back in. Uh, okay, so agenda two, instead of it advancing, when we get to three doom, we flip one of the bystanders over uh, and they turn into a nasty enemy. Uh, okay, so this is turn four, I need to put my encounter card, and it is a roach swarm. X is the shroud valley of its location, so that is two, so it is a two, two, three. So I think first action would probably need to shoot the roaches, which is super realistic, obviously. Uh, so I am five on two. Am I happy with five on two? Do I want to boost it and definitely get rid of these roaches? A five on two is okay. Oh, there you go. Roaches are gone. Next, uh, I think we'll move down. Room ready. Uh, oh, and six cards is what I need, right? Cool. So I can test. Uh, I'm testing willpower. So I could just throw a steadfast in. And three on two at the moment. Or I could take a damage. So I think that's what we'll do. I'm going to parlay her. I'm going to take one damage. boost my test that means mark's ability triggers hey look at that so i'm at five on two for this test which is a success gets me a clue and also after you perform a parlay action in the ballroom gain two resources once per face so that gets me two money as well that was a nice turn so now i need to just make sure i can play fine clothes before i get corroded or anything like that it's not even temp fate no enemies, so we go to upkeep. 
on the hunt is pretty nice for us actually. Let me get a resource. One doom. Then we do we draw any counter card or do we play on the hunt? On the hunt is really in there because it combos so beautifully with scene of the crime. So on the hunt you can pull an enemy and then you can use scene of the crime to pull clues off of your location. At the same time, pulling an enemy that we can kill is better than a treachery that might be really horrible. Because we've got plenty of money, I think I am going to play on the hunt. So we're going to search through the top nine cards for an enemy. The only enemy we have is a maniac. Uh, so, yeah, we'll pull that. Shuffle the rest. And let's see. Forced after Maniac engage, you take one damage and deal one damage to Maniac. So, I will take a damage, which draws us a card from Mark's ability. Maniac takes one damage. And now we start. This is turn five. Okay, so he is a 3 3 1 essentially. still going to have to use two actions, so I don't have anything that's going to give me. Or do I attack with home front so that I can heal some of my damage? I don't hate that. <coughs> because it moves my damage, so actually it's essentially a vicious blow as well. I think we'll do that. I'm going to attack with the Colt throw in the home front which puts me at 9 on 3. Great. So that's a pass. So I do 1 damage from the coal. Sorry, 2 damage from the coal. And I move 1. So actually he's he's dead. That's right. Plus 1, 1, I move 1. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. Second, I'm going to play fine clothes for 1. I think I missed a resource last upkeep, but I'll uh, I'll leave it as is. Oh no, I didn't. I spent one on um, on the hunt. That's okay. And then last action, I'm going to uh, parlay Ishimaru. So it's now I'm a three on zero. So tentacle is the only problem. That's grand. Get the last clue. Oops. Sorry. Get the last clue from her. She's been interviewed. Let me just show that. So again, pause if you want to read the story text. Great. Uh, I can use the reaction on there, that location to get two resources. And that is all my actions. No enemies. So, draw a card. Evidence might be useful. Get a resource. To do. Turn six, and you draw a counter card, and it is a young psychopath. Uh, okay, so I can take a horror to make it easier to hit. I think we'll probably have to do that. So then it stays at two, two, three. First action, shoot psychopath five on two. Do I want to boost that at all? Uh, five on two, so I'm only three up.
I think it was just the cash because it got so much. Um, cool. Okay, so we got to one doom. Turn eight. Draw my counter card, and it is using filth. This location gets plus one shroud. That's probably not an issue for us. Let's see. <coughs> okay, so this turn, I've got three bullets, and I really want Constance to just go down. Six health, and she's only got four punch. So, I'm a five on four at the moment. What we'll do is first, actually, we're going to shoot her, and then throw in. Uh, I'm going to throw in. That's a steadfast, actually, that's uh, it's only giving me a plus two. Seven on four. Well, if we throw in a set first and a vicious blow, that's because we get eight on four and we'll do three damage. So eight on four. Great. So there's three damage on that. She's halfway, halfway there already. Second action. Hmm. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to take that back just because it's in the same turn. So instead of doing that first action, what I would have done is sort of take the initiative in, pull the minus one, so I only would do two damage. That way I can do steadfast and vicious blow for my second action, otherwise take the initiative would lose icons. So now I'm eight on four, plus one, so she takes uh, three damage from that. So we're up to five damage. And that was a second bullet. Now, last action, I need to hit her one more time. We just go for a standard punch. So I'm five on four at the moment. I'll throw Steadfast in, gets me a plus two. So that puts me up to seven on four. I'm only three up. So I'm gonna throw in Scene of the Crime to go four up. So eight on four. I need to pull another token. Ooh, that was close. Great, she's dead. That was real close. She goes in the victory display. She's not worth any victory points, but it does mean she's not going to come back and do anything nasty. Okay, so enemy phase. They're all gone for now. So we'll do upkeep. Booze and filth goes away. The shroud goes up. Turn nine, pull an encounter card, and it is tough crowd. So could, this is where I go spend one additional action to parlay. Uh, which does suck. So I'm not going to be able to interview this guy this turn, and then if he flips, like in the next, uh, the next time around, that's going to be really rough. But uh, I can't do anything about it, so that's fine. Uh, <coughs> okay, so he is three willpower, but it's actually only, uh, oh, I didn't do the test, did I, last turn, so I also need to test, uh, what was that, three on two, see if I need to drop a tool or not, minus one, no, I wouldn't have had to drop a clue, I really need to, I'd get yeah, better with remembering that test, but it's fine, it's worked out okay. First action then, we're going to parlay with him. So I am a three on one. I can't really boost, I could boost it, but I sort of don't want to. Three on one. Cool. So there's a, a clue. Just check, this isn't the first time. No. If it was the first time, like uh, Frozen in Fear, that would be really nice, but unfortunately not. So we can't flip him this turn. Um, so what am I going to do with my last action? What I might do... I'd love a other weapon, but actually what I think I'm going to do is put my flashlight down too. And that way if I do end up dropping clues now when I leave the test, uh, it's easy to pick them up. Uh, enemy phase, nothing happened. Oh, I ended my turn and I need to do the test, so I'm three on two. Okay, so I do drop a clue. 
as we are visiting Gallery. Right, so I dropped a clue. It's a shame. Now we do upkeep. There's drawing the sign. So that reduces my hand size to three. Which is fine, that's what I'm at. Probably isn't uh, an issue now at this point in the game. But then we go to three oh tough crowd goes away, go up to the three doom, shuffle these and pull Ishimaru. So Ishimaru Good version goes in the bin. Ishimaru nasty version comes out. She is a six four three hunter and after you fail after you deal damage to her. Okay, so basically you can only attack her to kill her. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're just going to try and avoid the hell out of her because she's really nasty. Uh, okay, so then we're up to turn 10. Pull my counter card, which is Dance of the Yellow King. Um, so I need to pass a test of three. <coughs> I'm three on three. Is this where I take a damage? Hmm. I don't want to ditch my fine clothes yet. Because uh, I still got, at least I got one more parlay test to pass. Then I can ditch fine clothes. So I think we will take a damage to boost to five on three. That draws us a card. Five on three. Draw again. Shit. Okay. Big fail there, so she is going to move all the way over to me. Get rid of that, and she's going to hit us for one on one, which I'm going to cancel with I've had worse to get two resources. Oh, I could really have been done with passing that. How am I going to? defeat her because I am I'm attacked I've got, I've got one bullet left I can't even boost to get stats because then I'll have to flip her flip Sophie and then she is uh, turns into a whip will basically minus one to all my stats is this the point at which I just say fuck it really would love to get that last investigate that last parlay off could I do that and just tank the hits that might work and I can evidence that oh shit no I can't evidence that last clue so I won't I wouldn't get that clue I don't I still only get three experience I can't get to eight I don't think uh, hmm. yeah there's no way I'm gonna evade her this is the fun bit isn't it so I can take a few hits from her I can't use Guard Dog to do anything, even if it was out, because that makes her draw encounter cards. Is it worth trying to get that last? I think it probably is. So that would be, assuming I pass, that's going to be one damage and one horror. Then I would move, it's a damage and a horror. Then I would move, which is damage and a horror. Then she would hit me, which is another damage and a horror, and I would die. So no, I can't do it. But if I just run out and resign now, that would be three damage and three horror, but actually some of it I can soak on my fine clothes. So I think that's probably what we do. So one, we're gonna move there, which is a damage and a horror that on my fine clothes. Two, I'm gonna move to the foyer, which is a damage horror and then I'll resign which is the damage of horror and that is the conclusion so Mark gets out alive um, I managed to get three interviews um, I resign with six clues so that's three experience at the end of the scenario uh, and yeah that's that's the conclusion there. So uh, let's see if it's uh, whereabouts is it here? Oh, I may just put it after it's not happening. I'm just want to have a look through this quickly. Don't 
quite know why it's doing that. There we go. Last king. So uh, we resign. So the resolution is resolution one. Uh, we get out of the house, and we have the option of what we want to do. Basically, we're going to get to Lunacy's reward. Uh, and so we have the option, uh, things have calmed down so we can go back and look inside, which is a terrible idea. Uh, we don't trust it one one bit, so we block the door and get out of there. Or, you know, um, they're all monsters, let's burn the house to the ground. And anyone who's played this before knows there is only really one option there. And we're going to talk to the mother, so the house is burned down. Uh, and the good thing about that is... Um, yeah, you dare not risk stepping back inside that madhouse, but you can't let the monstrosities run amok either. You root through the open garage for a few supplies, finding an old hose, an empty gasoline canister, and some matches. Knowing what you must do, you first siphon some gas from Mrs. Domain's Oakland 654A. You spread the gasoline across the front porch, inside the garage, and around the manor's outer walls. From there, all it takes is several matches to start the blaze. You watch from the front yard as the manor is eventually consumed by the flames. The sound of the crackling fire and snapping wood and the screeching of dying horrors fills the street. Satisfied, you head back to your vehicle and tear off towards the south side, full of grim determination. You did what had to be done, right? Okay, so we burn them all. Maybe some alive, maybe some dead. I feel like Mark as a soldier fought two really nasty like, abominations. Very nearly got killed by one of them. He would definitely want to burn the place down. So we get one conviction. Uh, we have slain all of them. We interview three, and then we put two cultists in the bag. And the next scenario will be Echoes of the Bus. Uh, so I will see you then. Thanks for watching.